very, very special welcome to the very, very first evening's viewing on Rutland Weekend Television. Tonight is a very, very special occasion, as you can imagine. There's a very, very special party going on, as you can imagine, live in the <laughs> centre of Rutland tonight, as you can imagine. All the stars, as you can imagine, are there waiting to <laughs> talk to Pete Murray, as you can imagine. But before we go over there, I'm going to have a little something here with you just to, to celebrate, <laughs> as you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, we'll be going over to the party in a moment, as you can imagine, but <laughs> right now we're all set to enjoy the very first programme on Rutland Weekend Television. <laughs> Ham sandwich, bucket and water plastic, Duralex, rubber McFisher's underwear. Plug rapid emulsion, sick custard without sustenance in Kipling Duff geriatric scenery, maximises press insulating government, grunting sapphire clubs, incidentally. But tonight... Sandpan Bombay Bermuda in diphtheria rustic McAlpine splendor. Rabbit and Fat Fat Fui jugs rapidly. Big bio rule liners must green gauges mixture eight with nipples and tiptoe rustling machinery. Rustically inclined. Good evening and welcome. Hello. Foreskin mousetrap view Mount Everest in tray lobotomy in England. Saddleback, saddleback. Lecherry billboard kettle bum simpering snuff masticated bow side handset lemonade enterprisingly appetite rubber eyes plum joint. Curvaceously mucking squirrels. Uh, I see. Uh, rapidly piddle pot strumming Hanover peace pudding mouse rumpling cutly corridor cabinets. Sick in a cup. Mm -hmm. Door jam whisper taps underland shower curtain. Ice wallpaper cups crouchingly. Rubber king wrap butter kissing feathers. Definitely pheasantry daughter. Successfully douche dinner bottom. Machine wrapped with butter. Machine wrapped with butter. So. Nail attacking butterfly clouds reputedly. With that, I might galvanize sugar. Elbow wrenchingly heartfelt until poor spraying. Perspicaciously rattled mandibles on asinine shoestring drawn to lost three butter machismo were never cobbled therein. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Well, well, that, that was, uh, <laughs> as you can imagine. Uh, just a reminder that we'll be going over later to this terrific party that they're having to celebrate the opening of Rutten Weekend Television, but uh, <laughs> right now we're going to have some, some lovely music. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, great. <laughs> as you can imagine. This man to all appearances Well hung Roger in the artful lodger, Brian in whips of 
evening all. <laughs> well, that was, that, was, that was just great, as you, as you can imagine. Well, this whole evening is such fun and everyone's tremendously excited, as you can imagine. And now it's time to go over live to the party. <laughs> Great. Uh, just a few slight teething problems, as you can imagine. So uh, let's go over now instead to uh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> something else. <laughs> just great. <laughs> how, how much longer is it to go? Till what? Well, till the... Till the end of the game? No, no, till they take me outside and... Till what? Well, t till I'm... Oh, till the hanging? Yes. Yes, I don't know, there's hours yet. We don't get off duty till you're hanged. Oh, so there's still some time? Yeah, bloody ages till we're off work. Um, wouldn't like to go a bit early, would you? What? You know, ask them to hang you a bit early. Why? Well, I've got a luncheon appointment. Sure, sure. Well, it doesn't matter to him, does it, whether he's hanged at quarter two or quarter past, but it means I can get back and get a shower in. Check. You bastard. Typical. Only it's a bit tight, you see, getting back and getting a shower in. What's it like? What, the shower? No, no, the... Oh, the hanging. Yeah. Oh, diabolical. Disgraceful. Ought not to be allowed. I reckon he'll abolish it after you. Not before. No, you'll be the last. Good bloody riddance. I'm fed up with having to lose deliberately at chess. You're not losing deliberately. Of course I am. You liar. Look, mate, I could beat you easy if you weren't being hanged. You were trying. Of course I wasn't. You were. Look, mate, we had a bloke in here last week being topped, you know, hanged, just the same as you, and uh, I had a beautiful chance to fee and check how he's rook. And do you think I could do it? No. You bloody did. Yeah, I did, as a matter of fact, a beautiful move. You beat him at his last game of chess, you miserable bastard. Well, you get fed up. I mean, how would you like it to come in here day after day and play chess with a bloke who's going to be taken out and hanged on move 40? Shut up. Well, it's not conducive to ideal chess. I mean, when Fisher won in Iceland, they didn't take Spassky out and hang him. They ought to have done. They ought to have done, granted, with his Nimzo Indian. It's a much they... longer... Shut up! Can't you see we're talking? They ought to have done, but they didn't, did they? Telegram! Telegram? Oh, it's a... It's a greetings telegram. Congratulations on your hanging the Monday Club. That's nice of them to think of you, isn't it? Oh, there's some more here. Best wishes with the hanging aims of industry. Good luck on your last night, the Sunday Telegraph. Wish we could be there with you, Ron, Harry, Ethel and all in South Africa. Oh, and there's just an ordinary run from the Home Secretary. What's it say? Well, it's not a greetings telegram at all. For God's sake, what's it say? The hanging is candled. Cancelled! No, it doesn't say cancelled, it says candled. Well, it's a misprint. Well, we'll sort it out afterwards. After what? After the hanging. But there isn't going to be a hanging, it's cancelled. No, it's candled. Well, what else could candled mean? Well, it might mean he wants it done by candlelight. Don't be ridiculous. Why? It would look prettier. No, 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 no. All we've got to do is query that word. Oh, all right, all right. Uh-oh. What? For free repetition of doubtful words, send this telegram to the nearest post office. Well? Well, that'll take two days at least by post, and you've only got 20 minutes. Well, c couldn't you take it? What, I missed my luncheon appointment? I'll take it. All oh, right, all oh, right. I knew it was going to be one of those days. Find the pile to see the prisoner. Oh, come in, Father. Don't be too long. You've got a luncheon appointment. Yes. Now, my son, quickly, nip round the back. What? Nip round the back quickly, underneath my cassock. Uh, well, no, thank you, Father. It's very kind of you, but no, I'm not... No, no, my son. You'll find a door. Follow the staircase to the bottom, turn left, and you're on your own. I can't see anything. Straight ahead of your man. Oh, yeah. Oh, blimey, it's very dark in here, Father. There's a light on your left. Oh, thank you. Quickly, 
He's gone down for the pile. Oh, damn. This means I'm going to miss my luncheon appointment. So it was that Warder Peel missed his luncheon appointment. A luncheon appointment which, had he kept it, might well have altered the whole course of the entire history of the world. Had he been at that luncheon appointment, it is possible that life on this planet, indeed in this entire solar system, could have been so radically altered that the universe itself might have been utterly changed. It was only with my auntie. I agree, it's not very likely, but it is possible, you know. I suppose it is possible, theoretically. Where are we? Shh. We're still somewhere underneath Father Pyle. Will we ever get out of this priest alive? I don't know. One thing's for certain. What? I've missed my lunch. So the world could breathe again. The luncheon appointment was missed. The course of the entire history of the world would not be changed. The universe would not be altered. The solar system could continue as normal. I said it wasn't all that important. Oh, by the way, you were right. What? The telegram. It was candled. I thought so. Yes, it's very artistic, that Home Secretary. Yeah. Mm, it might have been nice, you know, little candles and sparklers and things. Yeah. These two men were to remain under Father Pyle for a further 42 days before surfacing, having spent longer than any man in the world under a Roman Catholic priest. Longer even than Arthur Smethurst, who spent five weeks under Pope Pius X, and the British expedition of Bradford, Wells and Dee, who spent a fortnight under a Monsignor in very difficult conditions. Here, a two-man expedition are returning to the surface after spending 28 days under a South Shields bishop. It's brandy and congratulations for the tired and haggard adventurers and a chance to catch up on the news. But why do they do it? What is the appeal of sitting under clerical gentlemen? Well, it's a challenge, isn't it, Ken? Oh, aye, we do it because they're there. It's a difficult sport and a dangerous, but we love it, don't we, Ken? Oh, aye, certainly, certainly. It certainly is dangerous. Four Italians were reported missing under this papal nuncio. A Japanese team did not return from the dark side of this tiny Korean cardinal, and Heinrich Bollmann was trapped for several days under a minor prelate. So severe has the problem become that the church has decreed that it is now a venal sin to squat under a cleric for more than seven days. Raymond Dyatt works for the clergy rescue squad, who spend their time pulling British sitters out from underneath religious leaders. Here, he's rescuing a couple of theology students trapped under Prebendary Ross. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. He's thank also you president much. of the Save Fish from Drowning campaign, a rather eccentric little rescue organisation dedicated to saving the lives of fish drowning in the seas and large rivers. Here, he gives the kiss of life to a salmon. It's a silly and unrewarding pastime, which gets him a lot of abusive letters, but it makes him happy. If you could see the expression on their little friendly faces as you pull them out of the water, it makes it all worthwhile. Here he's been called out to try artificial respiration on a herring. This time, He's too late. The herring has passed away. He must walk home with his thoughts and his pet sea bass, Norman. It's a busy life for Raymond Diet, for as well as rescuing drowning fish, he's also president of the British League for Assassinating Already Dead Leaders and found a member of the No Membership Society, from which he resigned on its inception. In 1958, he formed 14 strange societies, including the allied Quintin Hogg Poo Pooers, a club for hiding people's slippers, and the amazingly successful Society for Pushing Sailors into Shops, which claimed to have pushed over 1,000 reluctant seamen a month into Britain's shops. In his spare time, he likes to relax with Boys Will Be Boys, the official organ of the AA an association which he's not a member of, but is thinking of joining. At the moment, he's working on a new club, tentatively called the League for Introducing Neil Innes Songs, which will never catch on. Oh, yes, it will. Money, Pearl. 
Won't it, Teddy? Eh? And now, here's Neil Innes. Hi there. My name is Solo. Stoop Solo. See? I do amazing things. Right now, I'd like to sing for you. Stormy day. Stormy day. Cloudy sky. Cloudy sky. Wind and rain. Wind and rain. Got a watery eye. Watery eye. Yellow leaves. Yellow leaves. Fall from a tree. Like a fire. And the song in our hearts sounded like a choir. But I held on to you like a hand holds water. Now it's September and the days get shorter. Just terrific. <laughs> well, as you can imagine, <laughs> we just heard from the party that Princess Grace of Monaco is definitely not there, which is just great. <laughs> well, let's now. Oh, oh dear. Uh, well, we uh, <laughs> we we, uh, we seem to have uh, a slight, uh, as you can imagine. So let's instead join uh, tonight's documentary film. <laughs> great. This man is Bert Figgis, Private Bert Figgis of the Royal Rutland Fusiliers. He has been in hiding for 29 years. He does not know that the war is over. For nearly 30 years, Bert has been continuing his lonely war against the Japanese in the parks and woods near Shanklin, Isle of Wight. Such is his utter dedication to the British Empire that he will surrender only on a personal order from Stanley Baldwin. Towards the end of the war, the Royal Rutland Fusiliers were sent on a special endurance exercise from here near Newport, Isle of Wight, with strict instructions never to return till they saw a special signal. With D-Day and subsequent exciting filming, that signal was never given, and the Royal Rutland Fusiliers were never seen again. Except, that is, until about 1950, when Isle of Wight residents began to tell strange stories of people not on the electoral register, of strange people who did not own boats, who didn't attend cocktail parties, and who were never suitably dressed. One resident believed that there was something living rough in their rhododendrons. We suspected, of course, at first that we were suffering from hippies. So what did you do? Well, we put flamethrowers in, and my husband laid rat poison. What happened? Well, I'm afraid we lost most of the rhododendrons and nearly all of the petunias. Frightful pity. What about the strangers? Oh, well, we got a couple of dead ones, and the local rat man said they were rutlands, 
And I think in the end we got about ten pounds each for them, which was frightfully handy. From whom? From the army. They were, of course, frightfully glad to see the back of them, you see, owing them all that back pay. Then we found another one, but my husband used him as compost. We put him on the roses. Frightfully good for them. In 1959, a Mr. Roy Bolting of No Relation Villas Elstree took some unique footage of a Rutland foot patrol on the ornamental golf course near Ventnor. These are some films we took last summer. Oh, there's Ted. He's married to Alice. They, they had the caravan next door to us, a very nice class of person. Yes, they send us a card every Christmas. Yes, they always on the golf flute. Every day, couldn't keep them off it. Oh, that's Alice. She scored a hole in one then, yes. The Fusiliers kept rigidly to their encampments, reading the Bible and Biggles to keep up their morale. Food was scarce and a problem, except during the tourist season. Uh, 137 big whipsies, please. 45 with chocolate. Occasionally they'd eat out on captured Barclay cards, here at the Cozy Nook Cafe, amidst charming oldie worldy surroundings. But mainly, they stuck to their self-appointed task of broadcasting anti-Japanese propaganda from the gardens of suburban guest houses. Japanese! Pearl Arbor! Japanese! So they maintain their lonely life. What was it that kept them going all those years? Discipline, idealism, and stupidity. They were always a rather dim regiment, even by British Army standards. From 1954, remnants of the Royal Rutlands, the old impossibles, started to limp out of the ornamental gardens in dribs and drabs, surrendering to the local constabulary. Uh, no, no, clear on. No, uh, just... Just, uh, move along, move along. Well, he kept insisting on seeing the senior Japanese officer. So I left him with a wife while I nipped down the local Chinese restaurant to see if I could borrow an oriental waiter for him to surrender to. I returned with Mr Fong just in time to prevent him committing Hari Kiri all over the living room carpet, which was new at the time and had a fine hard-wearing Acryland base, reasonably resistant to most types of household spillage, but not manufactured to withstand a thorough soaking of bloody entrails. Unlike the bathroom carpet, which is washable and water-resistant with a nylon underlay, or even the kitchen carpet, which is a hard-wearing combination of non-natural fabrics interwoven with finest real merino wool yes, fibres. Yes, yes, quite. What happened? Uh, well, the kitchen carpet lasted about ten years before no, we no, had to... No, what happened to the soldier? Oh, I don't know. All through the 60s, Rutland Fusiliers trickled out of the copses to surrender. Eighteen surrendered personally to Bob Dylan during the Isle of Wight Pop Festival. But some, like Bert Figgis, refused to believe the war was over and continued to send back highly useful information about Japanese tourist movements. Bert is probably the last of the fugitive fusiliers. Their numbers have dwindled with no hope of replacement since Annie the Naffy Girl ran off with a Lance Corporal to form a commune near Wigan. To the visitors, he's a hero, typical of the indomitable British working class spirit which has allowed them to be happily exploited for centuries. To the locals, he's just another part of the scenery. We leave biscuits out for him in the winter. But to Bert, he is the last of the Empire, watching, waiting, and hoping one day to liberate Ride. So he continues his lonely war against the Yellow Peril, unaware that the fight has been over for 30 years, that the Emperor has had tea with the Queen, or that the Isle of Wight now has a Liberal MP. Another soldier who continues the fight, this time in Germany, is Major Sir Oliver Cain Gore Hamlin. He has been told that the war is over, but is unable to understand it. The war is over, Major. What? The war is finished, sir. I don't understand. Um, <clears throat> the war is over, Major. Oh, sorry, I don't get that. It's the end of the hostility, sir. What? Uh, we're not fighting Germans anymore, sir. I don't understand. Um, uh, England, uh, uh, Germany, uh, friends. No, I'm sorry, I don't understand no, this. No, no. The war, the war is over. Over. No, I don't understand that at all. Yes, yes. 
the completion of the whole thing, son. There is no more war. Could you say that again? He's also unable to understand quite simple sums or read joined up writing, and he's being used by the army as a minesweeper. Next Monday marks the 80th anniversary of the birth of Churchill's cat. Rutland Weekend will be celebrating this event with a four-hour dramatisation of the cat's life, with Sir Laurence Olivier playing the vet and Arthur Askey as Puss. There's also an exhibition of Churchill's cat litters at the Victoria and Albert Museum, and you can buy a memorial medallion with a picture of Churchill and a little pussycat. On Tuesday at 10.30, you can see It's the Churchills Again. This non-award-winning 192-part drama series continues with Lulu as Rita McChurchill, the little-known aunt of Fred Churchill, who was to grow up to be not a relation of any of the famous ones. Thursday night on RWT means, of course, Top of the Pops. Well, you can see more of Churchill's people on top of the Rutland Pops on Thursday. Just some of the things you can look forward to on Rutland Weekend. Well, I'm afraid that, as you can imagine, that's about it for this week. <laughs> we shall uh, maybe go over live to the party <laughs> next week, if there's uh, still anybody there, as, as you can imagine. Until then, a big kiss from me, and see you next week, <laughs> as you can imagine, until... <laughs> Great. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> Rutland Weekend Television is closing down now, and we leave you in the capable hands of the next rather lovely BBC announcer. <laughs>